six hundred dollars on the line tonight. Welcome to Sean and Lacey live right here on YouTube. You know what to do. Tell your friends. Round them up. We've got eight people watching. We'll get up to 16 by the end of the night. We're giving away $600. We're drawing six names, 16 of you. What are the chances that one of you, 16 people, get your name drawn? I don't know. How many people are on? 16. No, I can't tell because it says hey, people everybody. are waiting, but it's actually live. So maybe I need to just like reboot my whole. We should refresh. Oh, 20 are already on. So you told you 16. Four oh more people God. have joined in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just went past 2,000 subscribers, scratching and clawing our way Celebrate. to significance in the world. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you hit that like button. I want to thank both of you. Um, it was probably our two daughters who hit that like button. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> we appreciate you. We love you. Hey, if some of you normal, non-blood related people hit that like button, it makes Lacey super happy. It does. <laughs> hit that subscribe button and share tonight's transmission. Tell your friends about Sean and Lacey Live. Let them know that $600 is on the line. It's kind of a double whammy, right? Because I know you want you want to share because you want other yeah. people to jump on, but you don't want people to jump on because you kind of want it to get to $700 next week, right? You do want it to get to $700 next, next week. And you know what? I, I got to tell you, James Taylor is on here and James His name's Taylor, not in the, in the James canasta. Taylor has done such a good job of, uh, controlling the narrative of fake names that we've even got Trevor Gibson on tonight asking what are the odd six fake names will get called. So, Thanks, James. Appreciate it. <laughs> when am I doing a BDC live with James? I know. I'm oh, doing it. Um, J that's when we go see James and visit his clinic. So I think that is, uh, I think it's not too far from here. No, it is far from here. We're no. in Naples. He's in Dallas. It's no, pretty far no, from here. no. From a date standpoint. Wait until you I'm see James out. Taylor, Sean and Jimmy live on YouTube giving away no, money. No, he doesn't like it. No. I'm going to give, I'm gonna give James. Sean and Jim. I'm, I'm Jim, Sean and Jim. Hi, Jim. I'm going to give Jim the uh, controls of the digital canasta. He'll draw all Ooh. the fake names that he wants to draw that Oh, this night. is going to be fun. Yeah. This is going to be great. Yep. Yeah. I think it's great. What are we doing tonight? It's we got the 10th. Some... It's coming up. It's, it's the so tent. close. It's like two weeks away. All right. Yeah. You guys are going to. We'll we got see. some announcements. We'll see. We got some really cool stuff going on. James Taylor will be hosting with me on April 10th in the digital canasta. Maybe we'll be at $1,000 by then. Maybe. All right, what do we got? What do we got, producer? Cram! Cram, <laughs> Cramnutrition.com. Make sure uh... you stock up on your Cram. Thanks so much <laughs> to all of our friends at Cram Nutrition. I wonder if there's a new logo. I'm just looking at that logo. There is logo. actually a new logo. I'd we'll like have to, to see get the that. new logo. I we'll have to reach out to Cram, get who's the new on, logo. Who's producing tonight? Shoot, I forgot. I didn't forget who's producing. I know oh, who's no, producing. We didn't forget. We forgot I was to just ask. talking to them. Well, let me get through some announcements all here. Right, all right. Next up, hey, I'm cut off on that. Next up, oh, Crew 52, Shane Smith. The I hope only. that he's on here because then, Shane, go ahead and tell everybody about your upcoming event, the Tahoe Experience. Just um, scan that QR code. Shane is a chiropractor at the specific chiropractic centers in Chico, California. I got to tell you that. Putting I, on a killer event coming up in Lake Tahoe. I re and I really, really love the theme of the event. What is burn it? the boats. Burn the boats. Yeah, or burn the boats. And so it's this idea that you come with this specific vessel and you go there and you transform and you burn the boats. You burn the old vessel that you brought and you leave in a new one. And I think that a lot of people need that. So I love the theme. So if you're interested in burning the boats, having a transformation in all facets and areas of your life, you've got to check out this event. If you're new to tonight's transmission every single week, we had at the beginning of the year selected 52 volunteers who wanted to play in a collaboration game. Out of those 52, actually the digital canasta picks a name. This week, the name was Shane Smith. And then all 51 of the other members, they go ham. They light up social media promoting one of the 52. Every week we rotate out. Um, and this week we are promoting. Lacey and I, we're down for the promotion too. We're promoting Shane Smith. But you're going to see Shane Smith all over. 
Shane has a great little video with David Meltzer. So it ended up being know, Crew 52 so for David Meltzer. Um, I think that Shane thought that that would sell better than Sean and Lacey. But anyways, what is the, what's the URL? The to, uh, somebody put the URL in the chat for Shane. I don't know if he's on right now. I know it's uh, well, Sean so. Merritt going to be there. Brooke Lyons going to yes, be there. I think Brooke's probably on Brooke. If yeah, you could drop the, somebody put the that link, link for the transformation. I think it's Tahoe transformation. I think it's the, the Tahoe transformation. So that's why I was thinking. I, think the, com. I didn't know yeah. if I had the on there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. What else do we got? Abundance and overflow coming up in Nashville, July 19th and 20th. My favorite events, well, they're all my favorites, but I really do love this one because I love helping people break through their barriers and limitations around attracting wealth into their world. It's going to be a great event. We We've got speakers. Claudio Gambin. We've got Tyler McBroom. Look them up. These guys know a thing or two about putting your finances on lock. We're going to be working on your mindset. We're going to get you set up to receive abundance and overflow. We're going to be talking about money. We're going to be talking about being good stewards of your money. We're going to be talking about taxes. We're going to be talking about keeping the money that you're earning. All of that and so much more. It's going to be tons of fun. Black Diamond Club is headed to Nashville, Tennessee, Woo July 19th and 20th. We've got a killer tonk. spot right down in the middle of the action. I'm sure Grant uh, Dennis is going to be out there leading the two-step. I bet Steve Tullius will be out there leading, leading the, the two-step. Is it the two-step? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Is that, that, all right. Leading the two-step. Mike Hayashi will probably be out there leading the two-step. Lead two Lacey Book leading the two-step. Pretty sure um, uh, James and Luke will be leading the dub-step. The dub-step. At Abundance and Overflow in Nashville, Tennessee, July 19th and 20th. Go to www.blackdiamondclub.com and make sure that you get registered Join us. right away. What else do we got? The Book Yourself Solid Challenge coming up on monday it's not too late to join join us for another book yourself solid challenge these things have just been so hot um, and exciting i really feel like we've dialed it in and and so many people walk away learning the business fundamentals that are necessary to grow a business that keeps working for them yes www.bookyourselfsolidchallenge.com <laughs> monday get your gang of five that's what we're recommending Go out, invite 10 people to join the challenge. Listen, and the reason why I say 10 is because most people cannot be bothered. They're too busy to be successful. But I'm looking for the people that are like, all right, I'll do this. Tell them that you want to um, begin to collaborate with them, but that they need to take this challenge first so that they understand what the deal is. Get them enrolled in the challenge. Find out if they actually registered. Find out if they actually participated. If they did, I'd say that they're going to make pretty good collaborative partners, yes. www.bookyourselfsolidchallenge.com. By the way, if you are a chiropractor and you're listening to this particular transmission, what in the world are you waiting for? The Book Yourself Solid for Chiropractors is out. Head to amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com. Get your book, Book Yourself Solid for Chiropractors, written by Christine Zapata and Michael Port, is available for purchase now. Love it. Very exciting. All right. Who do we think that we have on um, tonight for the production of the show? What are your guys' guesses? We haven't done a guess the producer in a minute, in a hot second. Who do you think is behind the camera today? I don't know. Oh, gosh. What? <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no. Definitively not. We got a James. We got a Luke. We got a James. We got a no pay pat <laughs> this is true you know that why they call him no pay pat no because pat never pulls winners so mm. really He's we should have a winner no we just should have had pat on for the six hundred dollars so as you know it's not it's not pat um because every time yeah pat ha pat does not pull winners so we could have got a pot up to 700 mm. no pay pat he calls himself no pay pat too quiet to be james producer where are you at 
What's going oh. on? <laughs> James, you're too quiet tonight, apparently. Mm. It's very quiet. There's no sounds. Very there's quiet. no hype. There's no music. What's going on tonight? Well, I guess I'm super excited for tonight's special guest. I wanted to save all of the sound effects, the bomb drops, the cha-chings, the horns for when our special guest comes. So maybe maybe that's why I'm, I'm holding off a little bit. Can't, Look at can't overwhelm that. everybody. I love it. See, good answer. Good answer. Well, James, good. how many sound effects can fit on the board there? Any as many as this keyboard can fit. So I'm looking at, I mean, as many as the keyboard. I can program each letter of the alphabet to a sound effect. Really, the question becomes: Well, how many sound effects can I load into the into the computer oh. software? Yeah, you let's get more sound like, effects. How, how would get, you yeah. remember what the sound effects are if you had that many? You know, then it would just be like it would be like a roll of it would be like yeah, digital canasta style, just roll of the sound effects. Yeah, we should refresh, and it would be like. I mean, who knows? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was like a like that's what our team would do. They would probably hit some button and it would fart or burp or something crazy, and it would be massively inappropriate. We already said that guy's gone. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man, I tell you. But yes, we should have more sound oh, effects. Oh man, <laughs> maybe we should draw we'll a name right more. now. We should draw a name. No, yeah. we shouldn't draw a name. We should introduce our guest. Oh, okay. Go ahead. James, why don't you give an introduction oh. of our guest? Oh, that would be cool. James, can you do your uh, do an intro voice? Yeah, do it in your good uh, radio voice. Good radio voice. Yeah. Oh, I would see. I was not... go, go 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 solo, James, and then do like a good, a good, a good. Everybody loves the yeah, James. Yeah, like a a good intro. Let's let's see what you got. All right, hold on. Let me see here. All right, so tonight's guest is one that you're going to want to buckle up and pay attention to. This person I had the opportunity to speak with just last week, and she was referred from Sean and Lacey's good friend, Mark Murphy. And if you know Mark Murphy, you know anything about him, every single person that he refers into our world is someone who is absolutely amazing. Now, this lady here, she has lots of expertise that is going to apply directly to you if you are someone who leads people. She is someone that can help you understand how to lead your people better, understand your leadership qualities, and even to uncover your leadership blind spots, which happens to be the topic of tonight's live stream. Buckle up, pay attention, take notes, because we are bringing to the live stream none other than Susan Drum. Oh, hey, hey, Susan. Awesome. I love this radio voice. From the moment I met you, I was like, wow, what a voice. You, <laughs> that is, there's some power and resonance behind it. So excited to be here. People in the chat are saying James for ASMR. Um, sexy NPR voice, like it's the <laughs> late night radio voice, <laughs> voice okay, of God okay. voice. But Susan, he also does an incredible um, Obama, Bar Barack Obama. Why don't we? Why, why don't you just introduce <laughs> introduce Susan? Just do a short Susan intro as Barack Obama, bringing her up again. Go go solo again, James. Yeah, I'm here. Right. This is a redo. <laughs> a, Barack, a quick one. A, quick a Barack one. redo. All right. So tonight, for tonight's special guest of Sean and Lacey Live, we have none other than Susan Drum. I love it. I'm trying to use the audio and say Barack introduced me. <laughs> Wait, James, try, try Joe Biden. I'm going to see what you get. <laughs> I, I haven't practiced enough for that one. You got to give him some practice. Okay. Oh, Dude, work on, work on that they one, They said James. it's amazing, James, so thank you. Uh, I love it. I love it. So good. Well, Susan, we're so excited to have you on. I was talking to Sean and, and to you a little bit offline. And, you know, that's definitely, this is a hot topic, I think, because I think so many people, especially the people that we work with, they're service-based entrepreneurs and they get really good at the thing that they do um, and the skill that they have. And then they start to grow their business 
and start hiring a team. And they're trying to manage this, you know, delivery of the service, but also leadership of their team. And there's not a lot of classes on it. Not a lot of people are taught how to be a great leader. And oftentimes it can be a struggle. I'm super excited for this. I want to learn all about enlightened leadership. Uh, I want to find out what our leadership blind spots might be and how you might be able to be of service in that area. Um, what exactly does enlightened leadership mean and how can we uncover some of our leadership blind spots? Yes. Well, if you think about it, enlightenment means more conscious, more aware, right? I'm more aware of the impact I'm having. And, and you said it exactly, Lacey. I mean, your role when you have people working for you now is to create capacity through them to scale you exponentially. And what I often find is people are working maybe a level or two below where they should be, and they're not as external facing as they need to be. And a lot of it has to do with we weren't taught necessarily how to get the best of our people. And so that whole space is what I've devoted the last, let's see, over 20 years uh, doing leadership development. And I've done it for big corporations. And I'm talking like C-suite, Fortune 100 teams to private equity backed startup companies that have skyrocketed and done so well um, and took a lot of these tools and wanted to find a way to really scale it to any team. And so if you're leading a team, you might, you know, we, we talk about like some of the things that get frustrating, right? Um, what do you hear that gets frustrating in leading a team from your, from your folks? Well, actually, oh, well, I'll, I'll let you answer that. But before oh. before that, let's come back to that because this is a less formal. This is Sean and Lacey live. I'm gonna. I want to ask you something, a precursor to that. Lacey mm -hmm. and I um, believe that most business problems are personal problems in disguise. A little background for almost all of the viewers and listeners of this show: they are in uh, the service world, much like Mark Murphy. I don't think any that watches this sells a tangible thing like a like you leave like we sell them a paintbrush and they go home and they have a paintbrush that means that they they grew up if you will in business um, selling themselves and most of our viewers and listeners they 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 started their business at some point and they had little to no guidance and so they just went out and they they, they cut their teeth. Like nobody yeah. told them what to do. Nobody told them how to do it. They figured it out. And so then the challenge arises when we get to leadership because then they hire people and they literally expect their hires to do the same thing. Yeah. And for Lacey and I in a coaching world, when we ask them, hey, how come you don't help your employees? How come you don't train them? They say back, well, because nobody trained me. Right. Nobody showed oh, they, me. They should know, or I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I like so I want to. I actually, before we come to what are we hearing, I want to start there. Um, mm -hmm. What What can you? Because you do all of this work on helping us to understand the people that we're leading. Can we start with helping us to understand ourselves? Mm -hmm. As it a leader, why, why, why are, why are service that's, providers? That's like? where it starts. <laughs> well, the first place it starts, you know, as human beings, I think we think we're chameleons and can see 360 degrees, but we can't. We have a central vision and a peripheral vision. And where we point our focus of attention, you know, that's what we see. But there's something behind our head we can't see, and that's our blind spot. And so the model that we use, and some of you may not know it, but what we've done is really transformed it in how to lead a team is the Enneagram. I don't, have you have either of you worked with the Enneagram before? We've taken the tests and I have okay. a great friend that's an expert in the area, but I don't like we haven't. I haven't taken the test. Yeah, I had you do it once. Oh, I did. I have your results. I was a ZY. No, oh. it's a number. Uh, 14. <laughs> he has well, no idea, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're 10 out of 10. 
<laughs> it's like a fan. one or an eight, I think. Anyway, but <laughs> everybody who knows the Enneagram, no. please, please post in the comments what I am. There's so many experts. Just, t just tell, just put it in there. And tell me. So what we did right. is look. And by the way, there are a lot of sort of tests out there that are not as accurate. Um, we really use a very highly sensitive, highly accurate uh, tool that not only looks at the main type, which there are nine different leadership styles, but also the subtype. And there are three subtypes for every main type. So there's really only one test out there that, that looks at that level. But here's the thing. As a leader, you're naturally motivated, as a human being, you're naturally motivated to really focus on things that this is where your pattern is or what calls your focus of attention, right? And, and we think everyone else is motivated by the same things, but the reality is they're not. And in the model, and this is what makes it so powerful, if my natural inclination is to look this way and I'm saying, it's green, it's green, it's green. In the model, there's someone else that's looking in the area of my blind spot. And so if they're saying, no, it's yellow, it's yellow, it's yellow, this is where team conflict really starts to break down. But you can harness this model to really understand why it's valuable, what their perspective is and how to create the best of that. Because really what we're talking about here is cognitive diversity different perspectives actually can create the best decisions, but the more cognitively diverse your team, the more conflict you might have on your team naturally. Mm -hmm. So this tool is, is a methodology. And what we developed is sort of all of this. Imagine you have this one assessment, but you built out a whole application of it. How do you get the best out of your team knowing a bit more about yourself, right? what your natural inclination is, what your strength is, but also what your blind spot is and the other people on your team. What are theirs and what's the compilation that you have? And even what's the missing perspective, the perspective you don't have on the team that you might wanna just retrofit for. And what I mean by that is, you know, ask questions that someone of that type would naturally ask, remember to, to do that or have someone on your team play that role. And that helps tremendously as well. Well, that makes a lot of sense because I think probably the number one thing that I hear, and we had somebody say it in the chat, when it comes to leadership is com communication breakdown. A lot yeah. of people from a leadership standpoint, I don't, don't know if they can understand how to effectively communicate and articulate needs and have enough kind of communication that the other person can hear. But that makes a lot of sense because if we have a lot of diversity like that and a lot of different perspectives, also that means that you can't communicate with every individual in the same manner if we're trying to get things done. And I think that's where a lot of the breakdown happens. Typically you communicate in your own type of style, right? Mm -hmm. And not everybody responds to that. So that's definitely a big one when it comes to leadership. Yeah, notice that you have also a pattern in the way you communicate based on your leadership style. And so do other people. But I wonder how many leaders have asked their teams, what really motivates you? What gets you excited to get out of bed in the morning? What makes you want to press the snooze button? Because knowing that if you're going to get your team inspired and communicating and engaging and contributing, that's those are really important questions to ask and to learn the way they see the world, because ultimately that's what this, this model highlights. It's not talking about different types of behavior, but actually motivation and what drives you. Mm. This idea, so I'm stumped on this cognitive I know, diversity. I saw your wheels turning like, when she said that. <laughs> so what is it better to have cognitive diversity and a lot of conflict on the team yeah or do i want to get them all stacked up to be the same well there's pluses and minuses to either way just like anything right if you have all the people that are like you conflict will probably be low you'll all understand each other but you'll have some significant blind spots when it comes to maybe making decisions um 
I can give you an example. There was a team that had a whole bunch of sevens. I'm actually a type seven, which is enthusiastic visionary and really great, optimistic, good at brainstorming, looking at new opportunities, but um, maybe looks at things like it's already done, but like, you know, like, can't we just get that done? Someone else execute on that, right? And a typical, like what the visionary does because they want to be on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And without a more diverse team to say, whoa, 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 wait, hold on, hold on. How are we actually going to take that from vision to reality? And here are some important things that we need to consider in terms of the time lag before we could bring that to market, let's say. So that's on one side of the equation, but everybody will get along because they get each other or I don't know, you know, it's kind of interesting. I also have seen teams where, you know, when someone is actually kind of just like you and they bug you, mm. have you ever had that experience? You're like, oh yeah, I do that on my one worst One of me is too. enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, but on the other hand, if you have a very diverse team, if you don't learn how to handle those differences in perspectives, you will struggle with conflict on your team. Mm. But it can be overcome. And that's what we aim to do. That's what we aim to do through um, the processes where we have basically people go through a program with their team. They take their team through either two two hour sessions or one half day session think of it like a little team offsite where everybody gets to understand their leadership style individually and then what it looks like as a team and then you get to have a discussion what's working on our team and what's not working on our team and that's where the biggest breakthroughs come from wait this is part of that <clears throat> that's the process mm -hmm. that you take someone through yeah yeah so we essentially developed a I, the way i put it is a train the trainer a, a workshop in a box and we'll coach the team leader to lead this with their teams now we bring all the subject matter expertise um, in the form of videos and and uh, a course leading up to it that people go through to understand how to apply their leadership style but then we coach the team leader to lead a session where they talk together about, this is our team compilation. Let's learn more about each other, right? That's one of the first things that's so empowering. You're like, oh, now I get why you do what you do. Like, I totally see that. And what really happens is there's empathy built there. Like, okay, I get it now. I always thought you, you're just doing that to be annoying, right? But actually I get what you're really after and I can see the benefit of it. But then it takes it a step farther. It's not just about let's learn all the different types. But the second half of that is to say, and as a team, how are we performing? And we give you a team report that says, these are your strengths, typical. These are your typical challenges with a team of this compilation. And now set you up to have a discussion like which of these are present for you now? And the team gets to have that conversation like, yeah, I see us doing this and I see us doing that and I see him doing that. So that is, uh, that's essentially the process. And then they walk out with an action plan. Okay, here are the things we want to do differently as a team. And, and then some of it might be like, we need to take a deeper dive and have some follow on conversations, but a lot of it is low hanging fruit. Hmm. What's a, what is a one? That's the strict perfectionist or principled reformer. Principled reformer. <laughs> What's that even mean? Well, then, well, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping into a trap. <laughs> does it ever happen? So does it ever happen that you, um, you, you run your, your team through the testing process and you realize that you have some people in the wrong spots or just some wrong people. Um, and like, how does that go? Because that's always, I mean, and I'll say this with, for us in the consulting world, a lot of times, like that's, we spend a lot of time talking to clients that have just the wrong people and kind of they yeah. inherently know it. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're like, ah, this person's I terrible. Know. And they get on calls with us and they, they know this they person, them, but they yeah. can't release them. Yeah. Does the test help to one flesh that out? Two, does it make it any easier if I know, like I totally have Susan in the wrong spot on the team? 
I think it makes it easier because you're like, oh, now I see it. I think now it's not going to tell you whether you have the wrong person, but it will tell you if you put that person in the wrong role. And when you look at what they need to do and what their gifts, natural strengths are, but there's no bad leadership type of the nine. It's all about your level of growth and self-development in the type. And this is what makes this, I get so excited. So but bear with me as I geek out on this. The model shows you what your path of development is. And that's why I love it as a leadership development coach and consultant, because I don't want just some assessment that says, this is what you are. Like, so what? What's the so what of that? But this model shows you what your path of growth is, but not only what you need to do to grow within your type, but who can best support you in that growth? Because in the model, there's numbers usually on either side of you. So in my case as a seven, there's things I can learn from the, my wing styles, which are the eight and the six. Those have different perspectives than I would naturally have. And there's something I can learn from each of them, right? And then even more direct learning paths are the people that are looking, as I mentioned before, that exact opposite direction of you. Those are called the arrow lines in the model. Those people are the people that are likely to trigger you, but they actually have something to teach you hmm. and you have something to teach them. And so we start to see this model of our interconnectivity that I think is super powerful. I wonder if my number triggers you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what triggers a one? <laughs> Tamika, what is Lacey? Tamika knows what I am. I'm like a, I think I'm a five with an eight, You're eight, five, one or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> I think we need to get you to, we'll get you, we'll get you, you two assessed with a, a good assessment. One that's actually. So this is what I hate. Lacey's an eight. Yeah, we took the assessment. I'm a one and Lacey's an eight. Does an eight trigger a one? Um, could, could. You're both, if that's true, you're both what we call body types, right? So there could be some issues with anger, either anger suppressed or anger more outwardly displayed. <laughs> <laughs> or is it is it not an eight and a one and we're called husband and wife? There's that too. <laughs> That's just triggering sometimes too. No, but yeah. honestly, I, I really love this. And I actually have a kind of outside of the Enneagram question because obviously yeah. you've done a lot of work on understanding leadership and how to cultivate and curate great leaders. Um, what are some of your favorite books on leadership out there? Oh, yes. Well, one of my favorite is called Mastering Leadership. And there was a follow on called Scaling Leadership. Mm. And this book really looks at this idea of you as a leader are to scale the capability and capacity of your team. Like that's your role. Because if you want to scale your organization, you can't be the sole source of everything. So mm -hmm. you, your role switches to get things done through others. And it really goes into the components of what's required to make that happen. Well, I love that because I, I remember moving into that and that was a very difficult transition as I think it is for a lot of people where you are building a business that's solely dependent on you and reliant on you and you have a lot of control. And then you have to shift your energy to pour into the people and rely on the people to be able to do the thing, right? And that's just a, a hard shift for a lot of individuals. You give the title of the books again. Oh, they want the title of the books again. So it was- Oh, sure. Um, the first book was called Mastering Leadership and the second one was called Scaling Leadership. And Perfect. it's based on, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a tool called a 360 um a 360 performance or feedback review mm -hmm. um so that that is the model that we use as well for 360 it's called the leadership circle and we help people get feedback from their team on their leadership and so it describes that and it's very powerful and eye-opening for a lot of leaders right again living in the blind spot and some people are like well, do i really want to know this and a uh, part of me says well it's data it's out there do you want to stick your head in the sand or do you want to know how your leader how effective your leadership is right 
So it. Susan, you have a couple of programs. Um, who needs these programs and what will it help them do? Yeah, so anyone leading a team for, needs the first, there's two programs. So one is for teams and the other one is just for individuals. So if you are a solopreneur and you are curious about that, you can get assessed, but not only get assessed, understand how to apply it and do almost like your own mini 360 with your community. And so we set you up to do that. So the first one for the individual is called Enneagram Applied. And that is not only giving you the assessment, but really helping you craft your own development plan based on those things I talked about before, which are wing styles and arrow lines. But the other one is for teams. And this is for a team, I would say, of up to 10 people, because if you take more than 10 through a workshop, people aren't quite as vulnerable. But as a leader, um, it's called the Leadership Edge. And you're able to take your team through that to all get assessed, all understand their path of development and where they need to grow. But then it takes it a step further and sets you up to lead a team offsite with your team to talk about this, get on the same page about what you need to do differently as a team, and then come away with some action steps. I love it. And actually, we have a question for you in the chat. I just want to ask, because I think it's a great question. What's the difference between a blind spot and a bad spot? And what are the common one degree changes and common 180 degree changes companies have um, after doing the program? I've never heard the phrase a, a bad spot. Bad spot to me just means you're stuck. <laughs> right? I'm in a bad spot. I'm just stuck. I don't know how to get out. A blind spot means it's just a place you don't naturally look. And again, I think that analogy of we're not chameleons, we can't see in the back of our head. We always, I don't know what's going on back there. Um, and so recognizing that, so that's what I would say. I think a bad spot is changeable. A blind spot is also changeable, but it's learning about what that is. Um, it. Yeah. And in terms of, uh, Gosh, 180 and one degree changes. Hmm, I haven't seen so much one degree changes. The 180 degree changes I've seen is a reorganization of a leadership team where just decide the leader decided certain players need to come off and certain players need to come on. And really understanding as well, who do we need to hire in the future that we're missing on our team? And it's a big gaping hole that comes to light. Uh, and it. so, gosh, the, the, the understanding and the language that gets created then going forward on how people interact uh, has just been hugely powerful. But usually I think leaders start to recognize that they need to make some changes. So I think this is pretty revealing in that way. That's wonderful. Well, we the, such great information, and I know everybody's excited to learn how to step into leadership and utilize their strengths and what they have to become a better leader. I think that's important and something we're all always trying to develop. So such great information. The links are in the bio and Susan Drum with two M's dot com. Um, you can find all of the information there as well. Yeah, Susan, thank you so much for jumping in on Don and Lacey Live. There you thank go, you James. So much, it's so great to spend time with you and talk about such an important topic because it can keep you up at night. And I hate to see people suffer in, I hate to see people suffer under bad leadership. And I hate to see leaders just want to pull their hair out, feeling like the parent or the mediator with their team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so thank much. You so we much. hope to see you again. Bye. Everybody's saying thank you in the chat as well. The links to check out these two programs, whether you're a solopreneur, or you have a group of up to 10 people are in the description of tonight's video. Click on those links, check them out. Um, find out which program is best for you. Plug in with Susan, become a better leader. I think that in today's world, this is something that is absolutely critical. You're going to have to be able to lead your team, especially if things continue to get worse. You might end up like Diddy 
and then you're going to need to be a really good leader. So you got to make sure that you, you oh, you've Diddy. got your, your leadership skills on what a week. lock. Yeah. Or you might crash a boat into the bridge. You might knock down the, you might not might knock down the Baltimore bridge and then you might, you, the capitan of the boats, he needs leadership you know. skills. He was probably, he was probably an eight. I bet an Enneagram eight knocked that bridge down. You think it could have been? Yeah. Why an I eight? know it. Because that's what I am? Yep. <laughs> and because you're a one, you already know. <laughs> I, I love what, it. What was a somebody, what was a one again? Tamika could tell you all about you being yeah, a one. I'm going to see Tamika soon. I know. Tamika is also doing lots of great work. I think that Tamika and Al Herrera and Susan Drum, they should like get together and make a make a leadership, band. Yeah. Make a band. Make a, make a band leadership, on, a band. leadership band. I know. Tour. They should go on tour and they should help Tuck. companies all over the United leadership States. Tour. I love well, it. I want to just tell everybody too. Hey guys, we've got amazing episodes of None of Your Business dropping every Wednesday. New episode dropped today. We just filmed another batch at SoFi, we have Dan Fleischman coming. Love we have it. Albert Preciado coming. We have Tulsi Gabbard coming in the pipeline. Um, a bunch of great, amazing interviews. And we have our next dates coming up. Um, listen, if you are someone who has an amazing story to, to share and you feel like you should be a part of the None of Your Business SoFi experience, why don't you reach out to Natalie, N-A-T-H-A-L-I-E, Natalie at blackdiamondclub.com. Tell her that you would want, you would like to get some information on how you can be a part of the None of Your Business SoFi experience. You get to network with all of these great people. It's absolutely it's a lot amazing. Of fun. It's just fun. It's, it's cool to be in there too and experience SoFi when it's empty and see the podcast, be on the podcast, meet the people. It's just a lot going on. It's great. Yeah. Yep. So we've got those dates. So if you want more information, Natalie at blackdiamondclub.com. Make sure that you're registered for the Book Yourself Solid Challenge, bookyourselfsolidchallenge.com. And abundance and overflow. Make sure that you're registered for abundance and overflow. We've got all kinds of cool stuff and you got to get locked in on that stuff because we still got other cool stuff. But don't like don't like not lock in on the cool stuff because you're like waiting then you're going to miss out on this thing and then the other thing will come. I'm seeing a lot of, of familiar faces coming back in to yeah. Black Diamond Club, Book Yourself Solid. Uh, super great to be welcoming them. I see they're coming to abundance and overflow. Um, you know, you clear out a little. We have to sage the room a little bit and get, you know, dump a couple duds. And now, hey, it's going, it's, it's, it's looking good. Um, God had to, had to bail out on the brokies and the softies. Oh, gosh. It's true. Albert said. Albert said. We didn't say. But you know what? They the, are. You Albert know what the said if they're you know softies, people, it doesn't help you know if we what don't the tell them they're want. softies. You know what the people want? The, the people, people want, want the rock. Hundred dollars. Oh. <laughs> That's what the people the rock. want. We're talking about abundance and overflow. We're talking about how to attract wealth into your world, how to remove the interference from the abundance and money and all that wealth that's rightfully yours and one of them could be you the people want chandler versus mcgregor that the people do let's want that. go the people want that we want that yes, we do. <laughs> everybody wants to be shown the money james i think you need to come on and put that digital canasta up let's go there it is make sure you see your name make sure you can see let's james go. there james Watch is going to announce name. it in his obama voice and maybe see, you get a shout out from obama see if and it win stops on your name you got 30 seconds when you see your name test the chat but 600 it's tight like no no margin for error you must respond in the 30 second no replay because we're starting to get to big money big money big money big money stop do you remember that show? Yeah. Joke. The Jokers. Press wow. your luck. Oh, press, press your, your luck. luck. That's right. No Jokers. No Jokers. No All whammies. real names. No, no whammies. whammies. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. <laughs> Give us real names, <laughs> James. Give us real names. And then Digital Canasta, right. go. Here we go. Oh, I saw, look at all those names. Look at all those. I, I see. Saw, I saw Otto. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Lou. Lou. All right, you all right, are the winner. All right. Winner, winner. Kevin no Lou. No whammies. No whammies. No buying whammies. dinner. Kevin Lou. Kevin Lou, you've got 22 seconds to claim clock. your prize. No Kevin Lou, big winner tonight. No big, whammy, big no winner. $600 coming to Kevin Lou. Man, 
Winner, winner, chicken Kevin dinner. Lou. Come on, I Kevin. Ya, I love how many people know the no whammies. Call your friend. <laughs> call your friends. There's only 16 people watching. Kevin. Call your friends. Oh, Kevin, man. you did not win. Did not. I'm sorry, Nobody Kevin. called your name. Kevin, you, you lovingly passed on your $600 to the next digital canasta name. Go! Here we go. Here we go. No whammy, no whammy. Oh, Scott no Panther. whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Scott, Scott oh, your yes. You have won $600, Sky. <laughs> All you have to I... do is say, I'm here. Can James say that name in his Obama voice? Try that. Sky Desjardins. <laughs> nice. I love it. That is a real name. That's a beautiful. Actually, that's a really beautiful name. I, don't I like that. Sky. Name. I do. Sky Desjardins. Uh, if that was my name, I would be like, I would have some serious personal brand equity going on. I think I Sky. met Sky. Yeah. I think I met Sky. That was a good fun name. That's a real name. Okay, two down. All two right. down. Four more chances, y'all. Spin it up, folks. Four Watch four for your more, name. Four more. I saw Otto's name in there. No he's Robert Delude. Why is Robert Delude in there? Because he's a, a BYS. Gregory Robert. Powell. Woo! You have won six hundred dollars, Gregory Powell. Gregor, Gregory. Gregory. Go ahead, James. Give us the uh, Obama. Gregory Powell. Where your pal? You know, it's really the pauses for me. James has like the perfect pause down. <laughs> Not like Dexter pause, but like pause in the voice. But <laughs> Gregory Powell. Oh, Two, I tell one, you. Gregory, Gregory, you did not claim. Okay, six. first off, we need to clarify. No joke. We need to clarify. Bobby yes. Delude pays out of his own pocket for the book yourself solid mastermind because oh, they're like right. yeah so this so jim says employee names in the canasta seems legit it's legit when your employees yeah. love what you do so much that they want to pay for their to build their own business so does jane and so does jane, jane. has a, yeah. has a business with her evolve training center and so does natalie's husband yep. bryant yep so of course so shout out to the so jane employees could win. that yeah uh-huh natalie Bobby could, could win, win through bryant and yeah. natalie could win but through bryant yep. yep i think if bryant wins natalie actually won yep see but she can't she can't but she can't comment it has to she has to switch accounts on Ooh, the Bryant. natalie account. you hear that just so you know yeah, yeah. You, you can't you can't respond for your spouse hey she pays for herself who does oh bys natalie what the heck is going on hey right, everybody natalie told me today she loves the bys peeps yeah she 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 she, she loves likes, everybody she likes the bdc peeps. oh don't say that you no, lie. i saw that i no. I, we were watching 90 day fiance in the in the greek soccer player said i like you a lot i know so now whenever i tell sean i love you he says i like you a lot <laughs> 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 They're really like, we'll see how long we're going to be on this train, but it's been going for a solid couple of weeks now. So, <laughs> hey, everybody out there that's watching us on the show, I like you a lot. All of you. Okay. Names. Three Let's names get down. another name. Name number four. <laughs> All right. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, stop. Ooh. Joseph Pelicano. Pelicano. <laughs> Joseph Pelicano. Joseph. Oh, man. Pelicano. <laughs> Pelicano. Pelicano. I love it. I love it. That was that was a good one. That Joseph was Pelicano. That was solid. Joseph Pelicano. Somebody says if I win sales brunch, and somebody else said sales brunch. You no, know, our daughter is taking us to sales. We're going to sales. Where so, where's our so, Naples so people? Saturday, we're going to sales. Last three times we've been and to sales. And our daughter we've paid. Seen, she paid for it. We've seen Bridget Nielsen at sales. I know. I hope Forget that nobody it. wins because eating at sales could easily, for three people, could easily cost six hundred dollars. Yeah. So Maybe I, we should I will put be nice. Lisa's name in we'll there. be nice to have that money this weekend. We'll give it away next weekend. That well, way I could. Spend I said it at she sale. already paid for us. That was really kind. Where, where? I think she put it on her credit card to hold the reservation. Oh, dang I don't it. think that means that she. She like, told me I already paid for it. She oh, was sweet. me up. So oh, we'll wow. see. That's we'll what see happens. how. We'll see how it goes. That's you know how kids are with parents. Daughter. No, 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 but she's probably, yeah. We'll see. We'll probably end up paying. That's how it goes. <laughs> hey, we, we took James when we were in LA to Irori Sushi. Yeah. Sat on the floor. That was a new experience. James had never been to a Japanese restaurant where you sit on the floor 
and he loved it. And he loved yes. some of the sushi, which is yeah, rare sushi. for James too. Yeah. James really? only eats cheese James? pizza and raw fish. <laughs> <laughs> it. it was good. It was good really points. good. That was a good pick. Is this name fun, number five? Fun fact up? about James, he doesn't even like ranch. Or ketchup. <laughs> I like ketchup on French. Yeah, you do? He, does. Oh. he just doesn't like ranch. Just oh, no like, ranch. You know, that's like, yeah. He I, eats yeah, no salad plain, no dressing. Caesar without the Caesar. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. I used to eat cheeseburgers without the burger, so it's cool. <laughs> it's we all have our thing. Oh, Paul and Tully hates ranch too. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Some people think ketchup sucks, but no ranch. We've got, you know, That's yeah. A crime. It's a crime. <laughs> oh, I love this it. Name number five. This is name, name number five, five, right? Yes. Name yeah. number five. I think Here this one's going to win. Here I saw Dan Brown. I saw Otto oh, again. Otto. This one's going to win. Ooh. Ooh, Krishna. Krishna. Giuliani. Giuliani. Ooh. Ooh, Krishna's a pretty name, too. Krishma. Are you Krishma? Krishma. Giuliani. Giuliani. No, I know, but <laughs> Krishma Giuliani. Krishma Giuliani. Go ahead, Krishma. James. Krishma Giuliani. Ah. Oh. Not to be confused with one. Rudy. <laughs> Not to be confused with Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. Rudy. Oh, Rudy. I love it. Rudy. Rudy. I think we were just trying to get up to 700. You know what's funny is no pay pass on commenting now. So maybe he, it's oh, an omen. He he's, he's talking it. Pat about it. Pat's talking about he doesn't care for a ranch either, but he's here. He it, might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pat mushed it. Fake names. <laughs> I love it. Oh, All Ted right. was in Rudy movie. Oh, oh, fun fact, Ted. Fun fact there. Oh, where? You That's have to cool. let us know so we can see Ted in the in the movie. You have to give us the one time stamp. Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's all because of Ted. I wasn't even part of the movie until until Ted <laughs> led on the all the extras. <laughs> awesome. Fun fact there, Ted. My dad was at the game. It, they, they filmed that at a real Notre Dame game at right. halftime. And so my dad's friend had had a couple of beers and at halftime had gone for uh, concessions. And when he came back, they, they had the the movie score on the oh. scoreboard. And my dad's friend was like, what What happened? Look, at that's where Ted was. So Ted was at the oh. game with your dad. So Ted oh. and your dad oh, were in, in the, the movie. Stands. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Oh, fun. Well, that's awesome. All right. All right. Number six, last one, folks. Here we I go. I think this is going to win. Is this our winner? Winner, winner, chicken winner. dinner. Diane. How do you say it? Knife. 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 I think knife. Diane. Knife. Knife. <laughs> go with that. <laughs> oh, I love it. These are great names. I feel <laughs> like, look, they're names. Just because y'all think they're fake, they're not. The fake names don't exist. They're all real names. And I would put Jim Smith in if I who <laughs> thought of these. Yeah, why names? would we pick these names as fake Krishna, names? Krishna, Giuliani, yeah. and Daya. Nave? No, I do Yeah. Nave? Why would we write? Why would we even write names that we're unsure how to pronounce? Look, no pay. Pa no pay. Pat <laughs> came on the it. line and he. He did. Yeah, he mushed it. It was like a he Bronx tail. It? Yeah, Bronx tail. They all had it. nicknames and there was mush. And right. And anytime like mush showed up, then like they had that horse race and their horse was winning. And then mush was like, come on, number three. And they all were like, ah, oh, mush bet number three. And they tore their bet slips up before the race was over because they knew if mush bet three, there was no chance Pat that it was going to win. Pat's, uh, he says, I'm the mush. Pat the mush Kimball. Pat no pay mush Kimball. He showed up and <laughs> then the it was Kimble. all over. All of a sudden, all the names started getting drawn. Uh, that means next week, just like the Mega Millions, Sean and Lacey is up to $700. Super excited. <laughs> Can't wait to see you all then. It's going to be a great show. Oh. All right, check on that uh, link in the description if you want to learn more about Susan Drum and her amazing programs. Click those links. There's one for you solopreneurs. There's one for those of you that are managing teams. Make sure that you check out all of that. This week is Easter for all of you who celebrate that kind of thing. Happy Easter. Lacey and I will be at sales for all of you in Naples who can find your way to sales. Come on out. Saturday, we'll be there 
hopefully Bridget Nielsen will be there uh -huh, as well. That'd be fun. Uh, it will be a great time. If you happen to see or know Valco, tell them Sean and Lacey are coming. <laughs> Get our table ready. It's going to be fantastical. Hey, you guys have a fantastic Sean and Lacey week. If you are in Black Diamond Club or in Book Yourself Solid Group Coaching, we've introduced the live group coaching on a weekly basis on Monday, Book Yourself Solid on Tuesday, Black Diamond Club. Make sure that you're checking out those Facebook groups so that you could set an alarm and you can be with us live next week inside of those groups. We're back. People are jumping in. The challenge is popping off. Oh my gosh. You could just sit and watch us on your phone or your tablet and be entertained, yep. or you could get or to you work. Can join. And you get to work, you start reaching more people, you start making an even bigger impact, and a nice little lifestyle comes along for you. And you know what? We like you a lot. We like you a lot, <laughs> folks. Good night now. All right, everybody.